Aloha and welcome to Wisdom Dialogues with Hope Johnson. Coming to you today from my bedroom at Fairyland on the Big Island of Hawaii. As you might be able to tell, it's a little bit of a rainy day today, kind of dark and rainy. So I'm snuggled up in my bed. <laughs> Maybe you are too. Aloha, I love you. So I have something. Um, question that came through email and it was re really interesting he said what is your staple diet items what are your staple diet items and do you feel a difference health wise or mind wise when you beer that's part of the question I'm still trying to determine if I need food to live because sometimes it seems I don't but if I do need food, then what foods are most ideal for what I'm trying to do health and spiritual wise? So I thought this was a really fun question. What's your staple diet? And do you feel a difference mind-wise when you veer? Well, it's kind of the other way around another way around if subconsciously there's a belief that certain foods will cause a, an effect then the ego will use that belief system okay it's the other way around it's not like the food caused the health problem or the mind problem or anything food is neutral the food was used in that way Food is used in that way. It's used to bring about something that's meant to be. And it's only meant to be because it's believed to be real, believed to be necessary. It's like believing that punishment is real, makes the illusion of things that can punish and things that can heal, which is fine. It's fun for the play. It's fun for the play, but it's not real. So there's no, there's no need for me to go, okay, this particular food is my staple food. This is what I need to eat. That might arise. That might, you know, that might arise. Oh, that's what I keep on eating. That's what keeps on feeling good to me over and over again. Okay, that must be my staple food then. And then maybe it'll change to something else. It doesn't matter. That's the thing. And that's the real key thing here. The ego wants to convince you that you're vulnerable to things in the world and you're not. Okay? I'm trying to determine if I need food to live. Well, if you consider that you are life, you don't need anything to live. You don't need anything to live. And the body is made up of conditioned patterns. So someone, you know, is conditioned that food need food to live to some, you know, pretty deep deeply ingrained conditioning and then goes without food, they might experience some adverse effects. Is it, it, do, we, do we need food to live? No, of course not. But food is part of the play. And you can't choose whether you eat food or not. Or what food you're eating. See? So that's just one way the ego claims identity. And then, you know, in the, in, in the one about trying to get out of it, trying to change the mind, trying to make it so um, we can eat a bunch of food and won't feel indigestion from it or something, trying to get a particular outcome. That doesn't work either. 
and it's not necessary. It's always, it's always being presented what is the most joyful as far as food or anything else. What feels the most joyful? What feels in alignment, you could say, okay? Even if it means following a particular diet, diet, maybe that's happening for a little while. When there's not identity with it, it's not some idea that this pad diet pattern must work. Oh my goodness, I hope it works. No, it's more like a fun play. It's like, oh, let's see what this does. It's like experimenting. See? Oh, let's see what this does. But the whole time, no one is doing anything. No one's actually doing anything. So if the attitude is just one of curiosity, we find that we just have fun with food just like everything else, and it doesn't become some kind of dilemma. It doesn't have to be some kind of dilemma anymore. It doesn't occupy the mind. And when the mind isn't occupied with its own uh, made up dilemmas, then it's easy to know what to eat or what to not eat or whether to eat. It's just, it's obvious, it's apparent. It's not, not a problem. And here's another thing you're always eating exactly what you need to eat, always. If you ate something five minutes ago and you have a, a stomach cramp now and that thought that says, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that. You should have. That's why it happened. You should have. It's for an opportunity to see these things. There's an opportunity to experience the idea of separation. Look, look at the thought that says, I shouldn't have ate that. That's an idea of separation. I shouldn't have eaten that thing. Now my stomach hurts. You know, that's what's being presented right there. That's the opportunity for healing is that resistance. See, instead of just willingness to experience the experience. I mean, look, what, it, what the body is, is for is just compassion and forgiveness. That's all it's for. So, so, you know, in that, in that moment where it, it, there's an attack, you know, and a, a physical pain is like, you know, it's an attack. And along with physical pain comes all, this, all these kinds of thoughts of judgment. What you, did, what you didn't do right. What maybe someone else didn't do right. Maybe there's some blame flying, you know. But it's a gift. The whole, the whole thing is a gift. It's all to show, the demonstrate the contents of the mind. It's all to demonstrate belief. Okay. So if you make food something of importance, then it occupies the mind. It's an, it's an avenue for the ego to project lots of guilt and punishment. Okay. All right, so I don't see any hands yet. I know Lori said that she would like to speak with me. Um, let's see, is she? Yeah, she's doing it. Aloha. Hi there. Okay, yeah, that, that was very good, by the way. Very good for me. <laughs> awesome. Because <laughs> I see I'm not in charge of what the hell is going in my mouth. Really? Yeah. You're I not. clearly see it's yeah. part of the happening very yes. clearly because what it used to be, I remember driving home from work saying, I am not hungry right now. But I knew when, as soon as I walk through the door in this house, I, something goes in my mouth. I don't care what it, so I wouldn't trust myself. That's what the thought was back then I don't trust myself I, I can't have anything in this house <laughs> it was uh -huh. so ridiculous 
Oh, I drove myself absolutely crazy. Anyway, so, um, so you've helped me a lot in that regard. So yet last week we talked about how when Peter is angry, it's yeah. my anger. Mm -hmm. Not a, not as an individual though. It's just, it's, it's just a habit that you've been practicing. It's a projection. It's a projection of anger. It, it's a, it's subconscious. It's a subconscious following of patterns that make you feel angry and it's, it's anger at yourself, but you're projecting it outward. Like as if you get rid of it. Let's say, let's say, by the, uh, by the way, we had a good time at that party, the Christmas party. Yeah. We did end up going there. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. But he was angry. He didn't want to go beforehand. Right. Okay. And that's, my projection yes that's right yeah I've... you made him that way you made him that way for a purpose and if you look for if you if you look at the reaction in your energy field that's what you get out of it that's why you're doing it Okay, so, okay, let's, okay, that I've been literally racking my brain and it is, it's not coming. So, okay, I jumped to a different one. Say he goes out in the garage to work on the hot rod. Yeah. Something, something goes wrong. He comes in very angry. Yeah. It has nothing to do with me. How do you feel? My... How do you feel when he comes in angry? I feel sad for him. You know, I feel I, it's it's because he gets all worked up. So. <laughs> okay, so 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 basically, you're sharing an experience. Mm -hmm. You're sharing an experience. You're sharing the same experience because mm -hmm. this energy that's coming through is being felt just by both of you, or coming up, however you want to say it. You know, is it is energy that is being um, uh, that's that's being experienced in the moment is being shared by you too. Okay. It's like a dance. Okay. Okay. Even if something outside did it, because nothing can arise in your perception without your authority. So you want that to happen to get some particular feeling. There's some, there's some kind of energetic fluctuation that goes through your body and it becomes an addiction. So it's like you have to keep angry people around you. Huh. And the, and the, and even the sadness that you feel like, you know, even the sadness that you feel for him, that's a projection because if you see him angry, you don't see him truly. He's not angry when he's spouting off, pissed off. Yeah, that's because angry. that's like a, it's like, it's like a picture. It's like a painting. He's, he's the same as you he, you guys you know there's no there's no change there's no changing and there's no possibility of being angry it's a, it's only a dream the anger is only a dream for this body and mind yeah it's like a it's a body projection because who we really are doesn't have emotions Yes, that's just a, it's just a body projection because there's an addiction to that particular feeling that arises when he comes in showing himself angry. So if you're there to experience that feeling and not projecting back to him, like, you know, the common, oh, that's his stuff. Kind of mm. like putting up a wall like that. No, that's mm. his stuff. Well, then, you know, it's kind of like, a, it, it, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm joining, I'm jo really joining in this, um, in this energy, but pretending like I'm not because 
no way you're not don't you're not you're not feeling you're not experiencing the same thing when he comes in what when, when he comes in in the, before that i'm on the computer having a great either talking with somebody or something and it, uh -huh. I, my energy wasn't anything yeah so it, it's an unconscious pattern just arising hmm. it doesn't have to it doesn't have your energy leading up to it or anything like that but it's a subconscious energy just arising and so if it's just allowed to be experienced as it is and not pretending like he's actually angry, I mean, that makes him into a real person that has like some kind of power over you like that, you know, oh. it, it, like when you come, when he comes in, there's a difference. There's a shift. There's a change in the climate. As soon as he comes in, you can sense that. And that's in your perception. So it's making him into a person. Mm -hmm. Separate that, from and you. He blamed. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. So it so it yeah. just changes it. So there, it's like a. Well, it's I just a wait gentleness. A I'm what? losing you. I'm losing you. I lost. I did not understand any of that. You you fuzzed out. <laughs> You didn't oh, go it's black. Rain. It's rain. It didn't go black this time. <laughs> it's raining over here. So can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. Yep. You just keep okay, going. In now. That one was, oh, I wish you, you, can you pull it back? Can I pull it back? Let me see. Let me see if it's still in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. What were we talking about? <laughs> oh, so me. We were talking about the, the, the energy was oh shit. oh yeah so you so so a gentleness is allowed and the gentleness is allowed for yourself because there's a resistance going on resisting okay. him resisting what? this this anger that's going it? on in your in your own energy field so it's a matter of their uh, the compassion being allowed for yourself mm, for that I feeling see that. I see that. See? I see that. And so it opens up kind of like a gentle space of compassion for that anger to play out. And the and the way we can relate is so much more harmonious. It kind of mm. diffuses the situation really. I can feel it. I feel yeah. that through as you're saying it with your eyes and what you're uh, I can see how that would work, how that would totally yeah dissipate the yeah. all the tension and the yeah. angst and yeah 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 and it and it's a, and it's also a way of telling the mind i don't you know or telling the ego however you see it i'm not gonna play i don't, mm -hmm. I don't accept this yeah yeah i'm not it's playing not, that. Yeah, yeah this is not i don't accept that gift mm. you know i don't accept that gift of joining in anger trying to join in anger right Right. You know, I only accept what's real. And then you hold the relationship itself with an open hand like this. Mm. Because as you only accept what's real, that's going to that's gonna cause some changes. Change everything. It'll change everything. So so either, either you see some shifts going on as in less anger or, you know, maybe the anger, like in my case, sometimes I'll hear my husband like bark or whatever, but it's just, it, it's, it's just cute to me. You know, it's mm -hmm. not anything. It's like, Oh, his anger, you know, it's like, Oh, uh, okay. But so he doesn't stay in it. But it, yeah, there's no, yeah. If, if that were, if that were the case, I can't see how we would be together. Really can't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't resonate to that level. Mm -hmm. So he, he joins, you know, what happens is it's like, uh, there's a, a holding of a higher vibration whenever anyone's angry or anything like that. And, you know, basically either they join that or they're, they're moved, they're changed. There's a change that occurs. Mm. And, you know, and, and it's like, just all it takes is just being there with that sensation of, Oh, I don't want this. I don't want their anger, you mm. know, cause that's where it's a kind of like a hurt child. And it's kind of like, 
it's okay. That's not their anger. Mm. Yeah, it's yours and it's all right to feel it now. <laughs> mm, there's no reason to resist it. Wow. There's no reason to resist it. Mm. So then think, but you know, one way we resist it is like, especially in marriage and stuff. And it's like, oh, well, this is the one that I, this is the one that I'm with. That's just the way he is. Okay. I guess that's just how it is. Mm. You know, you know, Work for me, it's always, yeah, for me, it's just always open hand. Like, mm. you know, show me show me and you know for me it's just like a, a, a holding the the vibration of acceptance and peace and harmony and letting all the people whoever they may be to flow however they flow and i don't have mm. anyone mm. And this guy over here comes braun yep. gets some ice cream mm. hi braun <laughs> <laughs> he's a sweetheart okay. so um the Oh shit. What is it? Oh, do you ever get angry? I can't say that I ever get angry because I'm not able to get angry. No one's capable of getting angry. Uh, Basic basically, you know, the, the energy of anger arises. And for me, the energy of anger arises in my energy field. And you know, it if it if it's it felt. Recognized, if yeah. it's recognized as such, then it doesn't have to be expressed. Mm. If it does, it does, and that's okay with me too. Ron, do I get angry? Mm. Mm. He doesn't know. <laughs> he, just, he couldn't go to a specific. So that, yeah, huh? Yeah. So it's it's not for. You know, for me, it's not, um, it's not really, I could see that it's not beneficial to get, to act angry. And I know, I know acting angry is just acting, is just acting something out. Right. Well, so it seems. Yes. Yesterday morning, I, um, was the first time I really got frustrated in a long time. I went to put my debit oh, card oh. in to give some, to get some gas. And it didn't work. Okay. And I'm like, what the hell? There is a plenty of money in there. I used it the night before. This is the following morning to get gas. And it's not working. And it's not, my PIN number wasn't, it, it was being rejected or whatever. So I was like, what the? So I just left and I was like, I, I actually... It was gone. I forgot about it. Actually, my husband's like, well, did you find out? <laughs> I had forgotten about it, but I w there was frustration that came up that I haven't felt frustration like that in a long time. And I could see the thoughts, you know, the thoughts are going, why, why is that? What, you know, it was just trying to think because I had my gloves on when I was trying to do it and it didn't really probably didn't go in all the way. Cause you have to put it in and put, bring it back out quickly. And it, so it was searching for an answer or a reason or, you know, and then the frustration of, I, this is the place where I wanted to get it cause it's really cheap there. <laughs> and I happened to be right there. Wasn't out of my way, but I, so you're, so, so you're, you're taking time, space, money, all those things to be real. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That's all that's going all on. There's not a dream. <laughs> completely. There's just not a willingness to feel what the sensation of the experience because there's this attraction to taking the world as real. Right. The thought. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't overpowering. I mean, before if it was frustration, I'd be swearing and yeah. what the, you know, really you know, but there was none of and I literally let it go. I did I, not. I let it go. It just let go. The rest of the day, I didn't even. I got online, ordered some Christmas presents with the card. I, I didn't even think that it wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the frustration is is a gift, just like your husband's anger. Just like anger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just a, it's, you know, and it's just it's just not a. It doesn't belong to anyone. It's just passing through. 
Yeah. If you're experiencing it, you're experiencing it, and that's it. And just being with it, letting it pass like it does. It's just a passing phase. Hmm. So it's not, it, it is a result of thought. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and it's just a passing phase. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's a show you something. Yeah, that's why it's all a gift. It all means something. And it, and it, and it, all, has, and it has. all means what? Yeah, in the end, it's all meaningless. Exactly. But it passed fast, you know, literally. Yeah. I, I left the gas station and it uh, wasn't even a minute gone and it, it was gone. I would, there was no yeah. dwelling on it. There was no continuing to rehash it, you know, you know, the why, the how, the whatever was gone. Right. Yeah, we'll right. See. Identifying with it like I shouldn't right. be in this frustration. Right. right, right, right. That did not, none of that stayed, which before <laughs> would have stayed and just perpetuated, just kept going yeah. in the loop, in the loop, uh, you know. Uh, mm. <laughs> yep, I know. Mm. I know. Oh, there's so, candy. There's candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, no. so I got I got another okay. hand. I'll be okay. back with you. All right. I love Bye. you. Love you too. Thank you. Bob, aloha. Aloha. Yeah, so we have reception here uh, down Papaya Farms Road. So I'm here with uh, uh, Sean and Kat and Sylvia and... Um, uh, Anthony, who is here, and so they're very strict uh, vegans, raw foodists, fruitarians, and they were listening to your commentary on diet and saying things like, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like Sylvia, her best friend, Sativa, started listening to you and now is more lax in her diet. She doesn't put so much power in food, and so they think that you're... Uh, influencing the uh, friends in negative ways and that they don't think that it's just belief systems that there's power in the food that you have to be conscious about what you eat okay, Bob, Bob, Bob. why okay. are you telling why are you telling me all this is this is this you have a question about this mm -hmm. uh, of course of course people are gonna think like that it's fine do you have a question about it I have a question about it yeah is that why you're bringing it up or why are you bringing it up? Well, they're just uh, challenging you on your uh, ideas. And uh, I, I just, uh, so yeah, so you just feel that uh, it's, uh, that's it's not, that's not That's not necessary for me. That's not necessary for me. If people feel led to this, then awesome. Those are the people I'd like to speak with. Okay, so the, then the, any uh, here I'm with all these people, but I guess uh, you you silence them. They, they <laughs> have. They have <laughs> they, they, okay. Uh, um, when when did you first start feeling the these feelings of? When did you notice that anger started leaving your presence? When did I notice? Well, it's not as if it, it's, it's not as if it was real in the first place. Okay. It arises within the body. There's an energy feeling that arises within the body. It's a sensation, basically sensation. Okay. okay. It's an interpretation of energy and the interpretation that feels like anger is based on thoughts that are not true it's based on thoughts that make that make us guilty that make and, us guilty okay yes that try to they can't really make us guilty but they can make us feel guilty you know it could even okay. be said that we use them to feel guilty okay and did you so first notice that wasn't or like uh would you say that because i thought i heard something that you don't feel that anger is part of your 
or that sensation is part of of your life anymore yeah well i didn't say that i welcome the sensation anytime it comes okay so, it, so it's it's part of it's it's part of a, a body sense if there's a if there's a sense of, a, of the body then it's going to sense all the varying emotions that are playing out in the mind it's just that when there's not identification with it then there's no need to pursue thoughts that make the feeling of anger necessary. See, so that's how the healing happens because it's just it, it's just embraced the fact that there's no cause for anger. That it's actually a misconception that makes the illusion of anger. And it doesn't belong to anyone too. That's the other thing. So when it arises for me, it's always a gift. It's like, oh, and there's a relaxation, see? Okay, so in, in uh, like, can I bring up a situational type of thing? Oh, yeah, I love that. Thank you. Okay, um, so let's say that uh, there was, let's say I had a daughter. Yeah. And... And I found my daughter who is 14 years old. And let's say I found out a older man who was way beyond her age was beginning to uh, advance on her in a sexual way. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And instead my community um, it, it handles it in a way where he is only enabled okay. and not taken care of. Not, right. not told that that's not allowed, where he's not outed in the community for being a sexual predator, but instead in a community where he's enabled. Okay. So I feel this sensation of anger yes. inside of me. Uh huh. And I don't know what to do about it. What do I oh, do? Okay. okay. So, so, so that that sensation is is the gift to you. Yeah, that sensation is the gift to you, and. And through the through presence with the sensation of anger, everything becomes clear to you. All the doing, anything that needs to arise, all of it becomes very clear and you know exactly what to do. The not knowing what to do, the confusion, the confusion about the situation, all comes from resistance to that feeling all comes from resistance to it. And the interesting thing about resisting it is that it makes it keep on coming about again and again. See? So it, so these kinds of, you know... So what, what, how can, how can oh, that... Oh, I'm not hearing you. Are you speaking? Um, oh. So with that sensation, what I find is I get... Uh, can you hear me now? You're okay. going in and with out that now. sensation. I find I find that I really want to get violent. Okay. okay. Yeah. Bummer. I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean, and I've had that, and so I've had with, that happen. Yeah. I get. I, okay. So. I I feel like it's a really primal feeling of wanting to protect my young and protect yes. my community and, and my loved ones. And it's to the point where I would be willing to do, like, I am willing to defend myself or have to take care of things. So, okay. you know, and it's like, but yet in our society and especially in our community, violence is not condoned in any way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know. You tell me because you're having a completely different perception than I am. You're, you're telling me the story of how it is from your from your point of view and that's and that's fine that's all arising in your perception if you take a hundred percent responsibility for your perception because it's your perception like even the things that even the things that are, happen you know between him and your daughter whatever you you had like that all of that is actually coming from your own energy field None of it's really happening. That's one real interesting thing. 
None of it is actually happening. It's a projection of the energy field. It's a projection of thought. It's amazing. And to, and to recognize that in the moment is not to, uh, to make it to, to forgive some kind of wrong act, let's say. But it's, it's the kind of forgiveness that recognizes that it never happened. It never happened. Now, that doesn't mean that there might not be violence. See? Because even whatever arises out of you is, the, is, is, is just the play of consciousness. You know, and the body is innocent. It's not doing anything. It's just being used by consciousness to play out beliefs, to play out belief set systems. So when we address it from there, whatever else, whatever protective mechanisms seem to be taken out on the surface or anything like that, those decisions are already made. They're already playing out. The only part you have in the playing out is compassion and true forgiveness. True forgiveness. It's like forgiving them for what they never did. What they never did. See? The mind and the thought still play out, even if they play out in a, in a way that, that is protective. Maybe it even plays out in a way that's violent. Maybe it does. You can't help that. When they're seeing through the illusion, when they're seeing through the illusion, that's how it gets cured. That's how it stops these things from happening on, on all different levels, on all different layers, on all different timelines. Because it's an energy of, there's a possibility of being victimized. There's a possibility of being victimized. Because of belief in that possibility, that becomes apparent. Okay? And when it becomes apparent, that's the gift. So the lovely lady I was speaking to is now offline. So I'll mute that one. If you come back, raise your hand again. I'm um, happy to hear from you. That's not going mute for me. Oh, well, maybe I'm offline. Am I offline? Leah, are you there? I turned your mic on. Oh, I'm online. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> Leah, are you there? I see your mic. Yep, I'm here. Yeah, girl. There you are. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you great. Hey there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Wonderful. <laughs> well, it, it's so interesting to me that the conversation today, I, I just tuned in. I haven't heard very much of everything, but since I tuned in, I, I've been hearing um, anger is a, a topic today. Yeah. And um, and that's actually something that came up for me today, too, and that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, Leah. Welcome. <laughs> Yay, anger. Wow, it's mm -hmm. something I don't really experience a whole lot of. Um, yeah. Or I, and I, I did in the past. I experienced a lot of anger in my past, but since I've been having a lot of epiphanies and wake-ups and just doing a lot of, you know, uh, spiritual work. I haven't experienced a lot of that in the last few years. Okay. But I, ha but I did have this experience today where um, <clears throat> one of my clients just at the last moment just canceled their order. Uh -huh. And... Um, and I, you know, and I wasn't like super mad about it, but I was a little bit irritated. Okay. And I and I and I wrote them a message saying so. Okay. <laughs> that I was that I felt it was inconsiderate to do that, and um, that I that was. <laughs> You're always that, good like that, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> I just you know I just felt like 
I woke up in a bad mood and I was just kind of irritated. And so I just decided to like pass on my irritation to this person <laughs> just right. to, to let them, just to let them know that, you know, like I just, cause I, there's been other things in the past that this person has done to me too, that I haven't really expressed. Yeah. Um, that I, that I felt I've, I've had this perception that somehow they've slighted me or whatever, but I usually can just let that roll off my shoulders and not really um, let it affect me too much. But for some reason today, I felt the need to express my irritation. And I, and it was pretty mild. I didn't like really get upset with them. I just told them I felt irritated and I felt like it was inconsiderate. And I kind of left it at that. Well, anyway, yeah. the whole thing escalated because the other person got really defensive yeah. and Defend, defended their point of view and then I of course like replied and we went back and forth for a little while until the point where I was just my whole vibration was just totally saturated with this negative feeling of like resentment and anger and negativity yeah. <laughs> and you know and um and it's someone that you know is a friend of mine you know at least loosely, not a real close friend, but you know, someone that, that's my neighbor and we do interact. And so um, <clears throat> basically I was remembering, because um, I was at Wisdom Dialogues yesterday and we were talking about that whenever something happens in the external, like let's say mm -hmm. someone comes towards you with a certain energy, that that's yeah. self-talk, that's self-talk, right? That someone's coming yep. at you with, with something and I was reflecting on that, and I was kind of like looking at that, wondering like, what in me would want to have that kind of experience? You know, why would I choose to, you know, to have a, a conversation like that with myself? You know, and <laughs> um, and just kind of, and kind of like wondering about it because I, you know, obviously it didn't feel good, and it like yeah. really really threw me off and it yeah. and it really felt you know like it took a lot of my my energy away from being joyful or present with other things and, sure. and um you know and yep. left me feeling very very much like there was something i needed to do to fix it uh -huh. or to like you know I, I i had to resist the urge to keep dialoguing about it or uh -huh. you know yeah. and i actually did stop talking to the person about it cuz i knew that in the present state of consciousness that I was in, that it, we would just perpetuate it. Both of us would just, you know, yeah. we would both be like blaming and defending and blaming right. and defending, you know? Yes. And so I just, I just kind of dropped it, right? And just kind of like tried to, to you know, to deal with it on my own, um, but like within myself, really, uh -huh. you know? Okay. And um, just, be, just be with it. But anyway, it was extremely challenging for me to do that when I was feeling so triggered and um, <clears throat> and, and normally um, because I spend so much time by myself I don't get as triggered by other people because I'm not really around them uh -huh. yeah so <laughs> you know, when you it's all happy yeah it's, it's much easier for me to like you know stuff still comes up when I'm by myself but like it's I can it's easier for me to deal with it because I'm by myself and I'm not dealing with someone else's energy but when I'm having these experiences where it seems apparently seems like someone from the outside is doing something to me, right? Like this person yeah. disrespected me. That was my story. This, this person yeah. didn't didn't have consideration for my time and energy and disrespected me, you know, which I yeah. know is not really the truth. But right. that was like was was totally where I was coming from, you know, when I when I was like accusing her of irritating me. Right. So, so anyway, I'm just wondering um, about all that, and I'd um, love to hear your viewpoint. Well, basically, it's it's like you're trying to. <coughs> I'll let you finish that. <laughs> basically, <coughs> sorry, I still have a cold. It's all. <coughs> okay, go ahead. So it's like you're trying to teach yourself that you're guilty, that your guilt is real. See? Okay. Because everything you're saying to her is self-talk too. Yeah. Uh huh. 
So thing. you're saying like when I was telling her that I'm irritated, I was basically telling myself I was irritated with myself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and, you, and it's like it's trying to project out onto someone else so that that's not seen. That it's actually a self. Wow. It's actually a self projection. So in recognizing that you're feeling irritated with yourself, there's this opening for compassion for that feeling. Wow. You can only feel irritated with yourself. You can only feel disrespected with yourself. People are always so surprised, so surprised with me because they feel like they've done something to me. And and no matter what it is, I'll be like, no worries, you know, because I know. Even if it seems like an inconvenience, you know, nothing is really an inconvenience. And, uh -huh. and you know, there's a there's a full there's a full on trust with everything is exactly as it needs to be. So, you know, that that allows the grace to let people know that yeah, they can't they don't have any power to do any of anything like that. It's wow. It's, you know, it's so interesting. It's like there's this ego fear of not telling the truth, you know, or of telling the truth, you know, of saying it, it, the fear of saying, no, there's no way you could have. If I feel irritated, I'm irritated with myself only. Uh huh. Yeah. There's, so, there's, so, so when I, when I was writing. So, when I decided to write to her this morning and send her a text that I was yeah. irritated what should I have just not done that and just sat with the feeling of being irritated instead there is so no shoulds in this there is uh -huh. no should because you did not have a choice in whether you were going to send that text or not so just the okay. thought the, just the thought should I have is another attack Okay. Wow. Just that okay. thought, should I have done it differently? Or will I do it differently in the future? That kind of thing. Right. It's all for the same thing. Just take a step back. That's not about you. It's an attempt. It's an attack. It's an attempt on getting your your attention on that thought. Huh. Yeah, because there's definitely this thought that I did something wrong, you know? Yep, and that's 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 the one it, right there. It, it's it's whatever is in this moment. If the thought is you did something wrong in this moment, that's where that, that's where um, it, compassion can come in. You know, that's where uh -huh. you you can allow that forgiveness and compassion. That person that person is not really capable of doing anything. You made them like that. You made them see just so you can get this feeling. Wow. What are, you, what are you doing over there? Because it's loud. Nothing. <laughs> oh, you're not doing okay, anything? I'm not. <laughs> is it still loud? Is it loud right now? No. There's just some good, okay. like, crashing noises and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so, so, you see what I mean? Uh huh. Interesting. Um, yeah can't get it wrong you couldn't have gotten it wrong and however however you were made to play out that scene was for you it's a gift right and, you know, even the thought even even the thought of going back and how did I handle that and stuff like that that's all the ego because all that uh -huh. is a play. everything that everything that we seem to do is a play and you know what it already happened before it plays out Wow okay that's it's a totally mind blower yeah, it's totally compulsive. It's already happened before it played out. All there is wow. to do is experience the experience. In experience okay. the experience, it changes. Okay. Yeah, because I've been sitting with it all day. Um, like, I, I haven't responded to her last message or any, anything because I really wanted to wait until I wasn't feeling triggered. To yeah. communicate anything more more to her, you know, uh -huh. around it, because because ultimately I want there to be peace, right? I want there to be peace yeah. within myself, and yep. in our in my relationship with her, and I don't want to blame her for anything, because I do realize that ultimately 
yeah, I, I do have this judgment that it's not very kind to just do, you know, to like, you know, do something like that. But I, even that I know is not really true either because I, I just don't believe anything like that anymore on some level. But yet there's a part of my personality that that really believes that, you know, in, in some sort of moral conduct being better or, you know, um, I don't know. Like, the, like there's there's a certain way that you should treat people, and if you don't, then that makes you not someone that I want to be friends with or something. <laughs> well, basically, you can only treat people as well as you treat yourself. You don't have a choice in that. Wow. Okay. So you don't have to make up rules. You don't have to make up rules about it. You can only treat others as well as you treat yourself. So oh you my know, goodness. It, it, yeah, it's like. So so if, so if so if so if I am attracting somebody into my life who's disrespecting me in some way, is that just showing me that I'm disrespecting myself in some way? Is that what you're saying? Well, you're feeling you're 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 feeling disrespected is is uh -huh. because of the thoughts that you believe. Uh-huh. It's not because of that girl or woman or whatever. It's because of thoughts that you believe. All she's doing is reading the script you made for her. Uh-huh. That's all. And she can't help it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because <laughs> I think about I think about other situations too. Like I have this one thing going on where, you know, as you know, there's this person that I'm deeply in love with that has rejected me in the past, you know? And um, and and somehow oh. I, I still feel a lot of pain around it, and I'm wondering, like, is there a way to heal that um, experience? Because I do allow myself to feel the feeling, the sensation, or whatever of what it feels like to be rejected. Okay. And you know, and of course, like, there's a part of me that wants to heal that, so I don't have to experience that anymore. Oh, <laughs> you know, okay. so I. Okay. So the, the only sorry. reason you don't want to experience rejection is because you believe rejection is real. If you if you if you, if you let the uh, if you let the belief mm. that rejection is real just be a sensation for you, then you won't uh -huh. keep on attracting rejection. And you know you would re welcome rejection. You would welcome the feeling of rejection because it's fun. See, you you said when well, you started off, you said you're deeply in love with this person, and that's not possible. It's not possible. Okay. There's no person. There's a there's the 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 depth of love, the depth of love that uh, that's experienced is only with yourself too. There's no other person. Mm. Like that. You you can experience that. You could experience the depth of love that you are with other people. Right, but you're not in. You're you're not deeply in love with them, and that, that's a that's not a reality. It, it's like wow. celebrating. You know, it, loving is like celebrating the love that you are. This is not love. This yeah. is an this is attachment because love doesn't hurt. Okay, and, well then, I guess I I I do feel that's true, and I do feel I do acknowledge I've had a deep attachment. To this, mm -hmm. to be, to to my idea of the specific person, because I have specific experience with this person that's very different than I experience with other people, okay. and that I've really, I really enjoyed the experience when we were together and flowing our energy to each other in a loving way, uh -huh. you know, and having and having him in my life and like the physical, um, you know, expression of sharing, and then. When that was changed, um, I felt a lot of pain, you know, and I and and my feelings for him, my desire to be with him, hasn't subsided in like five years, you know. I still feel that longing and everything to be with him. Um, yeah, and, and you and you love that. You identify with a with the longing. Uh -huh. You go, you know, like that's your longing. And it's not, it's a, it's a fluctuation of energy passing by that you've habitually hooked onto 
because you love the story. You love the drama. It's romantic. It's like, oh, I've been rejected, but I'm still in love. You know, it's like this, <laughs> this story. Is, it's like, it, it's 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 just the story of pain, and uh -huh. and all that is this is it's like it's like these thoughts are like wind, but you've been so attracted to this flavor of the wind, this this kind of wind mm -hmm. that it's 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 automatically like oh that's so important it's like this thought about about me being in in love with this person can just float on by because that's not one bit true wow well when oh. you put it like when you put it like that it it feels a lot lighter you know yeah. for sure but at the same time like i i guess i have a habitual um pattern of thinking a different thought around it yeah, well, you know? you know, there's a there's also a pattern of projecting that uh, that love comes from a partner. That, you know, uh -huh. it's like there's a and, and that's not that's that's really not possible. It's really true that they reflect they reflect mm -hmm. how much love you allowed for yourself. And when when you're when you're uh, consumed. Uh, in pursuing thoughts about how you're this person in love with this other person who you cannot be with, that's not compassionate to yourself. Mm -hmm. See, so you can only, you can only yeah. attract a kind of partners that match your mind energy. So if you're non-compassionate mind energy, and, and here's another thing, it's a big burden for these guys when you place your happiness on them it's an energetic thing that they can heal that, that they can feel this it's oh, like a, no, it's I, like a clingy kind of thing yeah yeah i totally you know? i totally acknowledge that and um yeah. and at the same time i've 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 gone through so much growth around that and i don't i know that my happiness doesn't doesn't um hinge on him or on anyone, yeah. you know, I know that, and I know that the love that I feel is my own love that's being yeah. reflected back to me. I understand all that, and I feel that a lot, and I do, I do, okay. it has brought me a lot of sense of relief, and yet there's this, there's still this thing that I'm constantly dealing with where I feel like a missing of him, or like a wanting of him, or a, like, you know, like there's something missing, you know? Yeah, and, it's just um, something to hook your attention. It's really nothing. It's just really okay. nothing. It's just something to try mm -hmm. to hook your attention. See, it's like, Man, it's well, like, but there's this, but there's this, but there's this. But all it is, it's all the same. It's just the thought. It's just like wind. It is not. It's, 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 you can just relax right now. You know, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how relaxed you think you are right now. You can always relax a little bit more. And just, well, I guess that, that I guess well. that's it. Because I mean, I just it just seems like it's constantly wanting to hook my attention, and it's it seems like I have to be constantly vigilant. You know, <laughs> you, well, you know, know I, that, that that goes on, that goes on, and it's worth it. Uh -huh. That goes on, totally worth it. It's almost like it, it. It's almost like a a wrestling with the devil. Only you know, you're not really doing the wrestling. Actually, all you're doing mm -hmm. is being. And, the, and, you, and consciousness takes care of everything. Consciousness feel, takes care of it. Do you feel like there comes a time um, when that need to be vigilant kind of like lets go and it's not an issue anymore? Or yeah, that... because, yeah, because it, it just becomes, like in my experience, I went through that need to be vigil, vigilant for a while. And, you know, there mm -hmm. are times where it comes up where there's a need to be vigilant. I maybe experience it for a couple minutes, but you know, sometimes, sometimes a time will come up where it needs to be vigilant and maybe it's like a couple of days, maybe once every, uh, I don't know, six months to a year it might come up where there's a need to be vigilant for a couple of days. But for the most part, most of the time, the, the, it's not really so much vigilance anymore. It's just like, it's automatic. The, the, the uncomfortable sensation rises and it's just allowed a place of peace and compassion and it passes and everything just keeps on becoming more beautiful. So, so just, um, just in, in, um, reference to that specific incident, 
would you say that so when I when, let's say I have a thought like oh he's never gonna return to me and then I have this emotion that I feel sad let's mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. um, would you would you say because um, I try to I try to like just be with the sensation of like what it feels like the sadness you uh -huh. know but then the, but then there's these thoughts that are attached to it and um, and I'm just wondering about the thoughts should I just should I mean, because I'm not trying to resist the thoughts, right? I'm letting the thoughts be there because they're just going to be they're, there anyway. They're just passing, yeah. They're just passing like ticker tape. So I, I do I say anything to the thought, or do I just observe the thought, or what do I do? Yeah, that's like, all. The, look at look at the thought. It's kind of like it's fish. It's kind of like fishing. They're hooks. Okay. Fishing uh -huh. attention. So the thought the thoughts are are to take your attention off of the true experience which mm -hmm. is the feeling sensation mm -hmm. and focus your attention on believing in thought okay all of them are so, lies that's the thing all of them are lies i i know that and like i i try to look at it like that i'm like okay those thoughts not, that thought's not true that thought's not true it's just like man sometimes it's exhausting because the thoughts are just relentless at times you know they just keep coming yeah. and coming and coming and coming and coming you yeah. know and um and it, and it's very uncomfortable because it's it takes up a lot of my energy trying to be with every emotion that comes up with the thought, and you know it takes a lot of presence, uh -huh. a whole lot of a whole lot of presence. And I understand that ultimately it's worth it because when I when I get exhaust the experience of that, then maybe there's not a need for that experience to continue to continually arise so intensely. Well, yeah. Once you're able to have fun with it, there's no need for it to continually arise. Okay, you know, so that's the thing. I, I haven't, I haven't been having fun with it. That's not yeah. fun for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Once you're I, able to have fun with it, you kind of like, you know, it's like a a laughing thing because it's funny how you, you know, you're using this guy to hold himself up as if love is so separate from you, you know, to hold this yeah. guy up. Yeah. Love you could see your, the kind of feelings you're using him to get. You know, you've, uh -huh. you've gratitude plays a nice role here too. You know, just like thanking him every day. You know, okay. cause, cause it's like he's you're using him to get oh, the wow. to get this feeling like you're separate from love. Wow! And, and oh you know, that's what's presenting. That's what's presenting itself to you, and then you're believing that that then this sad story. And, you know, it, it's not, it's definitely not something that's leading to anything that you want. Kind of is the long way around, the long uh -huh. way around. But, yeah. but you know, this, this idea, these, these, when, the, when the feeling sensation is there, but you're still believing in the thoughts, you know, uh -huh. that's, that's going to take a lot longer. Then yeah, the, then the thoughts seem going, very, yeah. the thoughts seem very convincing in the moment. Honestly, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Especially since there's a feeling there to prove that the thought is true, right? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So it really seems it really seems like it's true. And see, that's where you have you have uh, the way a course of miracles puts it. I really like it. Is there are two teachers? There's the ego and there's the Holy Spirit. And so it's mm. like, teacher, do you, do, do you believe in? Which one do you believe in? Do you believe in the, in the ego or do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And it's that choice, mm -hmm. that choice in that moment to choose your, you know, you're always choosing your teacher. Which, uh -huh. which, which you know, which voice are you, which voice are you going with? And, you know, you can tell the difference ego voice always comes with some kind of uncomfortable feeling it's uh -huh. like it's a it's always it there's always some kind of heaviness there's always some kind of guilt error blame something like that and you know there's uh -huh. if, if if love meant there was a possibility of losing it what good would love be you know uh -huh. there's, there's no possibility of losing it that's the thing and that's how i approach my relations you know like even with my husband i know that there's no possibility of losing that the love yeah. even if even in the in the phys, if there's physical death body separation or anything like that that is a that what we have 
is 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 a is a representation of the love that's been allowed for ourselves. So whether or not we're with each other, that continues. And that and you know and I and the thing about it is, I just recently reconnected with him after four years of not being, not having any contact. And mm -hmm. I do have the confirmation that we still deeply love each other, that the love that we've had and had for each other is still happening. You know, like nothing has happened to that love. Like mm -hmm. it's actually still happening, which was really healing for me to experience. Yeah. But then there's, but then the, the ego is like, but there's not togetherness. So it's confusing, you know. Uh -huh. but, um, but at the same time, like I do. It's like I see both sides of it, you know. I see it from the spirit's perspective and from the ego's perspective, you know, simultaneously, you know. Okay. And I, and I want to less and less and less, obviously, identify with the perspective of the ego. Yeah. Because that's, it's very painful to view it as a separation, you know, right. or, that's, or that something is missing or something is wrong or it should be yeah. some other way that it is. Yeah. And just not recognizing that this is how you actually want it to be. Otherwise, it wouldn't be like that. Wow. So that's super powerful. You know, that's yeah. very, that's very almost like liberating and empowering. Although, yeah. um, you know, I, it's easy for me to see it that way when I'm talking to you, right? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but when you're not around or, you know, I'm not having that constant reminder, it's, it's harder for me to be light about it, you know? It's like I have a habit of just going into heaviness. So I'm wondering how to be more light about it. Is there, well, is there some kind of... What's that? Well, it's a habit, it's a habit of taking abuse. So the, so these thoughts are like an abuse. It's like it, it's like a, a stab in the heart. But you have to authorize that. You would have to authorize that. So just the uh -huh. idea just the idea that comes across your mind like you're deeply in love with this person, identifying as a person, that's pretty comical. And and that's not you that thinks that way. That's a thought floating by. Uh-huh. Whatever it makes you feel, whatever it makes you feel, you know, you're using that to make yourself feel like that. The thought actually can't make you feel any way. You're actually using it to get a feeling. So noticing that you're wow. using it to get a feeling. Why, what, would what would motivate a being to want to feel pain? What do you think that unconscious, is? Unconscious guilt. It's unconscious guilt. Uh, okay. Okay. So it's, it's projecting it's projecting itself outward so that it can be healed you've you've authorized all of this because you know that you have the power to heal it you have the you okay. know you know you have the power to undo this cuz all it is is all it is is erroneous thinking so where where do you think the origin of this guilt comes from do we do we carry it from past incarnations or is it from our ancestral lineage or what well past what's the origin of it past incarnations it's like everything's happening now There's right not really right past that but Tot it's, it's totally it's just the thought of separation see we're okay. we're given, we're given we're given the power of creation uh, uh -huh. we're we're not given the power to create anything that's not of love. That's why this is an illusion. That's why it's not created. Because because there is a okay. there's a, a thought of separation and a belief in separation and kind of going off on a tangent and and that's what the dream is. Okay. The dream of separation. It's not really uh, it's not really happening. Okay. It's made of yeah. thought. Made of only thought. Okay. Wow, it's it's it feels so real. Jeez. I know. It does. It's so amazing. It's a, it's, it's it's so it's so just magic and no one's doing anything. And you know, it to to remind people of their innocence is reminds reminds you of your innocence. And you know, uh -huh. for me if I felt like I wanted to resolve something with someone, I would probably be motivated to just tell them the truth. You know, I apologize. I was using you to get that to get that familiar feeling of being disrespectful. 
you know, I know oh, you didn't, wow. actually, I, wow. didn't, I know you didn't actually do anything. I love you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. You know, I, I could see how that would be really liberating, you know? Yeah. If, it's, you know, if, if, it's fully fit. It's fully in faith and trust. And you know, knowing that everything is going right, you don't need to protect yourself, but being defensive, right. being defensive makes this stuff come around and around and around more. There's no uh -huh. need. To, there's no need to be defensive. See, that's the thing. It seems like we need to defend ourselves. There's nothing to defend ourselves against. Okay, Lori, aloha. Thank you for coming. Lisa, I see your question too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get moving along. I got a couple more questions here, unless you had something yeah. that clarified no, no, right that, now. That, that's good. Um, thank you so much for um, talking with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Leah. <laughs> I love you. I love you. And thanks for that beautiful bone broth, too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Aloha. Lisa, I see your question. I have another hand here, and I'm going to be to your question. Thank you. Aloha, Bob. Oh, good. Yes, with the weather and everything, uh, we kind of got disconnected. So, I see. So my, my question uh, uh, around the issue of the food is how much power is in the belief system about the food and how much power is in the food itself? Like you were saying that you were using... Okay, Bob, you don't have a great connection. I can't hear you. Tell about you write your question in. Write your question in to me, Bob. Then I'll then I'll be able to answer that question. But the connection, we're both in the rain. We're both from around here and it's rainy. So yeah, that's the dealio. So I'm gonna go on to um, Lisa. And Lisa, if you wanna have a dialogue with me, raise your hand. Otherwise, I will just address your question here. How does one reconcile the deep attachment? I'm having a similar situation to the woman speaking. I have been having pain around the situation because he is married and now has another person that he is involved with, but won't be honest about that. I don't know how to speak here, but only type my question. Plus the time is running out. Just wanted to share this and connect. Oh, there's your hand. Okay, so I'm unmuting you. If you have your microphone on, you're going to be able to speak. I think there's some way for you to turn your microphone on. Uh, maybe on go to. Oh, you're green. You're on. Hi. Aloha. Thank you for joining. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad I could be on the call. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, second. I'm just trying to. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I resonated a lot with the the last caller and all the things that you said and it was helpful um i have that dance with the thoughts and the attachment yeah and the drama and it just it it feels so real it feels yeah. like um yeah it, it just feels like a real experience and I put so much weight into it and <laughs> there's the word weight and it feels it does it feels like super heavy you know yeah. um, and I feel this rejection if I'm not getting back like if I'm not hearing from him because he's like with the other one and um, what was I gonna say but I, I, what I did like, what I heard is that I can still love, like I can still love without getting it back or getting the attention or getting whatever it is that my ego is asking for or my thoughts are telling me that I need. Uh-huh. Yep. And, and here's the thing. The love is always for yourself. It's always for yourself. When it's when it's shared with another person, it's like the love for yourself flowing over. See? And I feel that. That's how, I you, feel that. That's like how I, you know. I feel like that when I, if I think about him and I'm like, 
I love him and I'll send him a text, but I feel like it's, it's so powerful, but I love what you're saying that it's, it's really my love. It's doesn't have anything to do with him. Is yeah. what you're saying. That's right. It has nothing to do with him. And then, and then when you notice that it has nothing to do with him, see, it's like, it's like these certain energies pull at us and, and, and get us to believe that our, our love is in this other person. Like it comes from this other person, our worthiness, whatever it is, comes from this other person. And it's a trick. It doesn't come from anyone. So in believing that it comes from another person, then it's easy to just feel like you're in love with a person who is going, he's married to someone else. You know, it's easy to feel like, oh yeah, I'm in love with this person because it's like, it's like, it, it's like, it's like a setup for a disappointment. It's just a setup for disappointment. It's totally. feeling, yeah. It's like, it, it's like the ego just makes this idea that this person is the person and then it's a setup for disappointment. There is no person. That's a thing. It's all coming from within. So when you notice it's all coming from within, at least in my case, when I noticed it was all coming from within, you know, I, I could only accept the best of the best. I could only accept the guy who's uh, completely focused on me. Right. Right. And I, and that's actually where, what I want and I'm conscious of it. Like this has been an on and off thing for nine years and I'm, I'm in a place where I, I know, I know exactly what I want and I know that's not what I want, but, um, I'm, in a space where I'm trying to release the whole notion and, and the dynamic of it. And I do like, I feel pain and, and then I get upset because I feel pain around it, even though I know it's like the, not the right thing for me. Well, you know, it's not that anything is it's in any, and you know, for right now it is the right thing because it needs to show you something. But right now it is absolutely the right thing. Okay, but I but it's been showing this to me for a while. Like I feel like I I, I guess it will just evolve and then when I'm done looking at it, then I won't have to look at it anymore. Yeah, exactly. When it when it becomes fun and, and you know, and really and really honest, it's like and it's like you're just really telling the truth. There's nothing he can do to you. You use him to get this experience. Because of, because of the self-talk, the self-talk that you take is personal. The self-talk that you take is true makes you want this experience, crave this experience. See? It's not him that you that you love, it's an experience that you're addicted to. Right. That's true. Yeah. So when you see yourself getting this pain, getting this pain, using him to get this pain, when you see yourself doing that, it becomes really interesting. Way more interesting than what's on the surface, the facts, the drama, all that stuff. But whoa, how am I using him to get this? You know, and it's like, and, and it's, it, it's, it's like taking this, this experience, this relationship and just using it for attack, for self attack when it could be used for healing or for undoing what's been done in the mind. It could be used for undoing what's been done. And okay. that would be. How can I get to that by 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 um, noticing and like your reactions? Look at your reactions. Look at your reactions to the way you think. Can you okay. sense? Can you sense the flux the fluctuations of energy in your body? Yes. Okay. Good. So if you can sense the fluctuations of energy in your body, look at that. That's a demonstration of what your thoughts mean, what you're making them mean. That's and, demonstrating it. 
and I'm I'm not like a damaged or bad person for having these uncomfortable feelings. Like that's also gets tied in. Yeah, of course that's not true because you're not a person in the first place. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and the, and the person personhood is only a projection. It's always changing. So if you if if you even have that thought, am I a bad or damaged person? That means that unconsciously there's belief in that. So if that thought even crosses my mind, am I a damaged person? That would make me laugh. <laughs> and, and yeah, and 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 yeah, it, it could make you laugh too if you are willing to acknowledge the truth. It is because ridiculous when I hear it's you. It's ridiculous. Say. It's ridiculous. Don't any anything that questions yourself, anything that second guesses yourself, all that does is tie you to stuff like this. Oh well, I'm damaged. That's the best that I can do. Whatever. You know, there's all kinds of sub subconscious stuff. I'm right. lucky this guy even likes me. Look how fucked up I am. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's all for fun. If you see it, if you see it, how it really is, it's all for fun. Okay. That's funny. It is. It, it is. It's like it's like using him to prove that you're damaged get goods. <laughs> it's like oh thank you for letting me use you in that way. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm done. <laughs> oh. I, I have to go get my daughter to sleep right now. Okay. Um, but um, wow. This was really great. Thank you so, okay. so much for Thank you too. You know, the uh, ridiculousness and the hilarity in it all. <laughs> Yay. I'll Yay. Practice. Okay. Very healing. Deep, deep belly laughs to you. I love you. I love you too. Aloha. Bye. Aloha. Okay. I am going to this last question right here. This will be the last question I take. Bob Shine, how much power is in one's belief system about food? That's all the power is in the belief system. All the power is in thought. Food is not real. There is no real reality to food at all. It is a manifestation of mind. Okay, the power that's given to food is given by the mind. So any effects of food are effects of the mind. Food is an effect of the mind. Body is an effect of the mind. Food's effect on the body is also an effect of the mind. There's nothing else but mind. Okay? You had knowingly used synthetic oils and people were getting great results. Oh, you had unknowingly used. <laughs> people were getting. That would seem to indicate that the power was in their belief in the oil. Uh, well, you know what? Here's the thing. It's, it's like, it's like, I really loved it i used it it's my projection the whole thing is my projection i loved the oil i used it i infused it with reiki that was my experience yeah and it was a passion of mine to share that experience so that's the experience that got shared <laughs> Okay, uh, unknowing, unbeknownst to me, there are synthetic oils, and they were uh, apparently dangerous for people. I found out later they were dangerous for people, and took them off and replaced them, and you know, learned a lot more um, what it what what it means to have real essential oils, and feel very confident at this point. But yeah, um, same same results that are expected. That was the amazing thing. Same results that are expected from the essential oils. Uh, people were like, wow, hope, wow, I've never experienced essential oils like this before. And you know, the whole thing is just an expression of love, whether it's a synthetic oil or not. The whole thing was just an expression of love, and that's what's that's what's transferred. That's what's felt. See? Um, also, there's the syndrome of men coming on and being needy. 
the syndrome of men coming on it. Yeah. And there's also women coming on being needy for men that goes both ways. Um, we just talked about that. There's no, there's no needing a, a body of bodies. Bodies aren't real bodies are projections. Um, bodies, bodies play out the contents of the belief system. That's all. It is due to not getting the love you needed from your mother. Well, I don't know if it's mother or not. And, you know, you did get the love that you needed from your mother. You just weren't willing to perceive it. You, you know, at the, at the time you wanted to perceive that. You didn't know you wanted to because you wanted it from another level. But at the time you wanted to have that experience. Oh, my mother... My mother doesn't, doesn't love me, you know. Oh, my mother doesn't love me. Oh, how terrible. There's no mother. There is no mother. You know, as, as a mother, what I notice is I come across as loving the more I recognize there's no mother or child. You know, it just plays out that way. Even, even a mother is trying to be a good mother in trying to be a good mother uh, they're they're asking for events that show them that they're not a good mother because that's the opposite you know there's no way anyone can be a good or bad mother we're watching a show and if there's a and and if there's a willingness to let it play out as it does everything gets better because it because more spirit takes over less doubt more love takes charge isn't that what rape is not for sex but to try to recapture the love and touch and intimacy you receive from your mother you know i don't know i don't know about that i do know that it's a fear based thing who knows what circumstances you can tie to that but it all comes down to fear of death all fear is fear of death Whatever it is, you know, a violent act may be the best someone can do to feel more complete right now. Maybe the best they can do to feel uh, more connected. You know, the pain is so much, that's a, that, that, that'll make them feel more connected, they think. Okay. People are attracted to partners that remind them of their parents. Yeah, well, you know, and that's not the parents' fault. It's just that the, par it's just that the, the parents are the projection from early on, that's what's familiar. So the projection continues, that's all. Yeah, yeah, it has a story that has no real validity, right. It's a projection that keeps on continuing, uh, you know, largely because of the victimization role, you know, acting like the parents actually did something like that was outside of your authority. Like, like you were really this innocent little kid and then the parents were not, not, not giving enough, not, not loving enough, not intimate enough or whatever, you know. So if, if that's the story, that's what you're looking for. That's what you're really looking for. That's why forgiveness, true forgiveness is so healing because it forgives what was never done. It's recognizing that, oh, that's what I was looking for. And it's noticing what's being looked for right now, okay. So it's all, all a matter of interest. It's all a matter of interest. Are you interested in the thought that uh, that asks if you're a damaged person? Is that an interesting thought to you, or is it just comical? You know, are you uh, are you interested in a thought that says I'm deeply in love with this person? Oh, how dramatic, Romeo and Juliet. You know, it's silly. It's silliness. Uh, and so and so letting it pass, even taking it as comedy, is even uh, even so maybe more awesome. Big belly laughs to that. Big belly laughs to these thoughts. Yep. Healing all the way around. I love you guys. Um, I'm on. Well, I'm online for the next two weeks. Day after Christmas. Day after New Year's. 4 p.m. Come join. If you're local, um, join me locally. You can email me or Facebook me or whatever. Let me know. Um, I don't know the I don't know the Facebook address address for that one. Uh, we are sponsored by Miracle Botanicals. That's our family's essential oil line. I happen to be diffusing some frankincense carteri right now. The whole time we're on Wisdom Dialogues, and yeah, we love essential oils. 
Um, we know how to source them now. We not only get the real ones, but we get the best ones in the world. We are just real essential oil fanatics, totally into it. Um, we love you. MiracleBotanicals.com, WisdomDialogues.org, Facebook forward slash groups forward slash wisdom, wisdom dialogues. I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining. Have a beautiful holiday and aloha.